Well, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Today I'm going to review three different chili peppers that I've grown. They're really doing well. Let's give them a try. Okay, well in this bed I have several kinds of peppers that I've been growing this year. And um, some of them are really hot, some of them are not. Some are sweet peppers. And um, here in the south of the United States, uh, there's often confusion when some of my uh, European friends or northern friends ask me about my peppers. Um, in some places, in most places in the world, a pepper means something that is not spicy as much as it is uh, sweet, like a bell pepper, like a poblano. Those are peppers. And when you're talking about these little guys back here that pack a lot of punch and a lot of heat, that's what uh, they would call chilies. And um, here, around here though, we just call them all peppers. Um, we call them chili peppers. Um, but generally we don't distinguish. And so that's, that's a little bit of confusion uh, that arises from our particular local lingo. And uh, well, that's just the way it is. But I've got three of them in here. I've got a Tabasco pepper, I have an ahi charapita pepper, and I have a chili tepin, which is a, uh, a native pepper to our region. And I'm going to try those today and show you what I think about these particular peppers. But there's an interesting aspect of these that I want to talk about. Check out these Tabasco peppers. These are beautiful. They're starting to get red and ripe. In fact, there's one we're going to pick. That's the one we're going to try right there. Uh, these are a lovely pepper. Look how prolific that plant is. So we've got a bushing habit, and you can see there's some of it coming up down there. With all the rain, it looks like we probably need to fertilize these again. There's another plant right there filled with uh, chilies coming in. And yeah, these Tabasco peppers have been prolific for me this year. And in past years, they've just been crazy. They've produced all the way through into the winter. What I want you to notice about these chilies is how they stand up. They stand upright and point skyward. And there's a reason for that. We would um, loosely, not botanically, but as gardeners or as naturalists, we might recognize that this is a bird style pepper, a bird pepper. And they stand straight up so that they will be enticing to the birds. That's how they spread their seeds. Check this, these other plants out. This is an ahi charapita pepper. And you can see they're very small fruits like that. And they also, they also stand straight up and they entice the birds. They tempt the birds to come eat. You can see there's all kinds of fruit coming in here that uh, I have not yet, um, that hasn't ripened yet, but there are hundreds and hundreds of fruits on that plant, on that bush. And you can see that bush is about the same size as my Tabasco pepper. And uh, yeah, that's a, that's a nice plant. I've really been impressed with these ahichara pitas. Supposedly the most expensive chili pepper in the world, namely because of the, uh, it's, it's fairly scarce. Only recently have they become available as seeds to gardeners, but uh, I think it's probably more due to the uh, labor that uh, is involved in harvesting them. But those peppers stand straight up as well. Okay, what I have here is another bird style pepper, and this one is actually sometimes called a bird pepper. This is the chili tepin, and I've got it growing in a like a 20 gallon pot here. This is native to Texas, North America, um, arid parts of our nation, especially New Mexico, Northern Mexico. Very prolific, very much a prolific producer. Tons of berries on these chili plants, just tons of them. And that's a characteristic of these bird style peppers. They put on a load of fruit, tons and tons of it. They are smaller, so it takes more to get a, a heavy harvest, but yeah, that's, that's impressive. And my grandmother had one of these that grew in her yard. <clears throat> Again, the, the fruits all facing upward. And the reason it's like this is that these chilies are um, supposed to be eaten by birds. That's how they've been designed. They're to be eaten by birds. They're to discourage mammals. And birds are the way that the seeds are dispersed throughout the environment so they can spread and grow. And I've seen mockingbirds land in this bush and uh, have a feast of these little red berries. These are fiery hot. Um, my dad used to make a hot sauce with this stuff, picked fresh off the bush at my grandmother's house. Man, you could hardly get that down. You could strip paint with this stuff. These are very spicy uh, chilies. Uh, I might just see how spicy they are. So 
Yeah, these are all wonderful growing plants. They've done really well for me. And if, if you're looking for a spicy pepper to add some spice to your, your kitchen, a Tabasco pepper is probably the least heat we've got here. The ahi charipita is probably second, very close to this one. This is probably the hottest one. Um, yeah, these peppers are pretty spicy, but used in moderation, they can really add a nice flavor to your hot sauces, to uh, any kind of thing you might need some heat. So let's take these in and take a closer look at them. When we look at other types of chili peppers like this cayenne, you can see that the, all of the chilies hang low. They hang down. And there's one right there that's got wire worms. But uh, yeah, this has been a good pepper for me as well, but we're not reviewing that one today. But it's a good one. That's a good cayenne. Here are our three candidates. Tabasco, ahi charapita, chili tapin. Let me show you the seed packets. These are all from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. The Tabasco pepper. This might even be, yeah, that's new seed, but I've grown old seed. This stuff stands up well to time. Here's the ahi charapita, and yep, that's what it looks like. And then here's the chili tapin. And you can see that on this particular photo, the fruits are a little bit elongated. And that's what you're going to find with these chili tapines. Mine are not so much elongated, they're more spherical. And there's just variation within this cultivar. Some of them are actually elongated, like that green one there. Sometimes even longer than that. But uh, they're all the same cultivar. There's just variety within it. Mine happen to be particularly spherical. So that's uh, what you're going to get with these. So these are... Um, like I said, they're a wild North American variety. These are from South America. I believe they're a, a very limited region in Peru where these are grown. Let's see. Yes, Peru. And these, of course, are famous for being uh, South Louisiana-style Louisiana hot sauce peppers. And uh, there you go, introduced in Louisiana in 1848. And very popular, very flavorful chili. I absolutely will not taste the entire chili because I know what happens to me when I taste the entire chili. So I'm going to take that much of the Tabasco pepper. I'm going to take, oh, maybe half, but I'm going to take the seeds out because I'm a wimp when it comes to super hot stuff. So I'm going to take the seeds out of this chili tapin and I'm just going to eat that. That should beat me down pretty well. And I've already tried these guys, and they put a whooping on me, these ahichara pitas. So I'm going to take just a little bit of each. And we're going to begin with the ones that are lower on the Scoville heat unit scale. So we're going to start with Tabasco, ahichara pita, and finally with the chili tapin. All right, I'm going to regret this, but I'm, I'm doing it for you folks. I'm doing this so you don't have to. I have my milk ready because I'm going to need it. But we're going to try first Tabasco. Mm hmm. The heat's building a little bit. Seeds and all. Getting in the back of my throat a bit but not too bad. A spicy pepper. It's got that Tabasco flavor. Not a whole lot of it, but I think part of the Tabasco sauce flavor comes from the, uh, the fermentation process. But yeah, that's, that's a spicy pepper. I'd put that a little bit higher than a jalapeno, at least that particular one. And perhaps it's also due to the fact that I took the bottom part of the chili, <clears throat> which doesn't have as much pith as the upper portions do. And the capsaicin, or that capsicum oil that is in these peppers that gives it the heat, is mostly in the pith and in the seeds. So I'm pleasantly surprised that that didn't kick my tail right, right off the bat, because I've got two powerhouses coming up. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. That heat did not last as long as I expected it to. Now we have ahi charapita. It's about half of a fruit. This one I might regret. Okay. Right off the bat, I get a fruitiness. 
almost habanero like and that's what this pepper is known for this chili pepper is supposed to be a fruity kind of floral flavor and so far it's tolerable in terms of heat of course I'm not eating a bunch of seeds it's got a little more spice a little more kick to it but you know it's not as bad as the last time I ate one of these Hmm. Perhaps the water that our garden has been experiencing, all the rain, has been watering down these, uh, these chilies. Uh, they're not as hot as I remember them. Of course, I still have that bird pepper, that chili tapin, to go. Well, I haven't had to hit the milk yet. Hmm. Pleasantly surprised. That is a delicious and flavorful chili pepper. Yeah, it's probably hotter than um, than you might like if you are into jalapenos, and that's as far as you can take it. Some jalapenos are, are whoppers, though. But uh, yeah, pleasantly surprised. That's actually got a nice little after effect. It's uh, still warm in my mouth. It's not building anymore. Once again, it's this one, beautiful golden pepper. Uh, $25,000 per kilogram of dried pepper is what the market price is, according to the internet. Not sure if I believe that, but uh, yeah, I'm very surprised I was able to eat the whole thing, minus most of the seeds. All right, it's time for the bird pepper, the chili tapin. This one, yeah, this is the one that's supposed to be the worst. Now, that said, my uh, future grandson was over here yesterday. Uh, he's currently in the process of being adopted through the foster care system. My, uh, my son brought them over and um, he is actually the brother of my grandson who has already been adopted through the foster care system. Well anyway, he was over here and he's a tough guy. He likes spicy food and he ate two of these whole. And um, for a while everything looked great. <clears throat> he wasn't sweating, he wasn't having any trouble. And he went back upstairs to play with my son and well, then he came down swiftly and got some milk. So he said it built up and built up and finally caught him uh, about five to ten minutes into eating. So we'll see what happens to me. Hmm. Not much to it just yet. Not a lot of meat in the walls of that, of that chili. Hmm. Building, not a lot of flavor, just more more about the heat. You can see there are tons. Well, you can't see, but there are tons of seeds in these. They're basically they're mostly seeds, and the seeds are where the heat is. So that didn't get me. Let's try the rest of it, minus most of the seeds. Now there are some seeds in there. I do want to feel the heat and kind of gauge where it is on the scale of these three chilies. Hmm. Okay. Not a whole lot of flavor, but there there is some heat. So it's not as flavorful as the Tabasco or the Ahi Chata Pita, but it does have some heat. As you can see, it's causing me to sweat right around here. But it's not intolerable. Again, I didn't eat all the seeds, but really it's not that bad. Of those, I would say they're all about equal in heat. And that's not characteristic. That's not what I expected to find. Okay, I'm not really um, feeling about five minutes into this. I've eaten a Tabasco pepper, an ahi chara pita, and I've eaten a, uh, a chili tapin. Um, not the whole Tabasco pepper. And the heat is manageable. It's not bad. It's not like the last time I had one of these where I was nearly about desperate to get something in my mouth that was cool and cold like uh, ice cream or milk. But uh, yeah, these are not bad. So I'm going to try a little bit more of this Tabasco. Um, you see it's got seeds in there. And I should get more, more heat off of this part. Mm, a lot of seeds in there. And that does have that kind of Tabasco flavor, that signature chili flavor. If you've ever had Tabasco sauce or uh, most Louisiana style hot sauce, they're made with Tabasco peppers. 
yeah, not really that bad, actually. Not bad. Those are some flavorful peppers. Again, Tabasco peppers, they grow profusely. And I've had these grow to about four feet tall and produce peppers, chili peppers for me, all the way into the next year. December, January, I was picking uh, ripe chili peppers off of my plants. And yeah, I really enjoy this one for the, for the volume that you get out of it. Um, this ahi charapita was my single seed challenge this year, and it grew quite well. That You saw the plant in the ground grew well. The one that I planted in a pot did not grow as well. That was my single seed challenge. And uh, yeah, you got to stay on top of these with fertilization if you grow them in a pot. There's been too much rain, and that plant is just about, my single seed challenge is just about to give up. But the one in the ground is doing great. As you saw, it probably needs some nitrogen, but I don't know. I think I'll grow this again just for the novelty of having these these uh, little spherical golden orange chili peppers and my plan is at least uh, to harvest enough of them to dry and grind into a powder. That's what I like to do with these super hot peppers. That way I can modulate how much heat that I put into my dishes that I cook. Um, yeah, I'm starting to feel that heat from that Tabasco now. And then these uh, chili tapines, I will grow these again. I'm actually going to grow them from seeds from the plant that I'm growing now. Uh, these are just nice to have around because, uh, well, they, they act sort of a trap crop. Uh, the birds go here before they go to my tomatoes that I've noticed. As long as these are red, you're going to have birds going and eating these. And there's plenty. There's plenty for you. Uh, there, you don't need much. Um, just don't give them to my dad. He'll make that paint remover hot sauce. But, uh, yeah, chili tapin, also called bird peppers or bird's eye peppers. Um, also called chili pekins, uh, tepins. All kinds of names for this cultivar, or various cultivars of this variety, of this species. Um, nice pepper. So I'm really happy that I've grown these this year. Um, they're really easy to grow. I started these from seed back in January, and it's uh, mid-July, so they're seven and a half months old, and you can see they've already matured and are putting on lots of fruit. I expect these three plants to make it through the summer and well into the fall, possibly even to next year. So, yeah, a little hot. A little hot, but good stuff. And before I go, once again, I want to introduce you to Seeds for Generations. This is a seed company run by a family. They are a wonderful family. Uh, they've got a good selection of seeds. They've got a lot of tools on their website. And if you purchase seeds from Seeds from Generations from the link that I have below, well, I'm an affiliate now, and I'll get a little bit of... Um, a few pennies for uh, your purchase. And that's one way you can sort, support my channel. I don't have a Patreon. I don't have an Amazon storefront. But I really vouch for Seeds for Generation. Jason and his family over there do a wonderful job. In fact, I just placed an order last night for a bunch of seeds that I'm going to grow in my garden and also for future giveaways. Um, yeah, look at those beautiful packages. I love this packaging. Seeds for Generations. Go check them out. Well, mouth's still a little hot but it's a pleasant heat. It's not a bad heat. It's not a killer heat. Those are some wonderful chilies. You should give them a try. I think you'll enjoy growing them. Hey, thanks for joining me on Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. Just a quick taste test and a review of the plants. Um, like us on Instagram. Follow us on Facebook. We'll talk to you next time. Happy gardening to you. Bye-bye.